If you want to get a high score on the TOEFL test, you should know technical words. These are words that are specific to certain disciplines or fields of study. In one of our previous videos, I gave you some examples of these words. For instance, in biology, you might need to know words like cells, photosynthesis, ecosystem, habitat, and mutation. In astronomy, you should consider terms such as meteor, constellation, asteroid, orbit, stellar wind, and lunar. Why do you need to know them? Because the TOEFL test is designed to assess your ability to understand and use academic English. And this includes understanding technical terminology that you may encounter in lectures, reading materials, and academic discussions. For example, TOEFL reading passages often cover a wide range of topics, including subjects such as geology, astronomy, geography, and so on. So, being familiar with technical vocabulary will allow you to understand these passages more effectively and answer questions more quickly. Again, I'm not saying that you should know all the words related to a specific topic, but having a good understanding of the main ones will really help you understand the reading passages better. You'll also need such words in the listening section, where you may be listening to academic lectures or discussions that include technical terms. We recently analyzed a complete listening section together, where one of the lectures was about reindeer and had a lot of technical terms and academic vocabulary. The same goes for the speaking and writing sections. Now, I'm often asked which technical terms you should know and which you don't need to know. Let's take astronomy, for example. If you Google astronomy vocabulary list, you may see a list with many terms. And of course, you won't need all of them. You should focus on the basic and most important terms. So in this video and in the next few, I decided to share with you the most important vocabulary from a few disciplines that will help you ace the TOEFL test. And our first topic is astronomy. Today, since we're embarking on an exciting journey through the universe, let's explore 22 essential astronomy terms that might come up on your TOEFL exam. We'll start with simpler terms and then move on to more complex ones. Ready to expand your cosmic vocabulary? Let's launch into it! The first word is celestial. The term describes anything related to the sky or outer space. For example, celestial bodies include stars, planets, and moons. A typical sentence on TOEFL reading might be The study of celestial phenomena, such as eclipses and comets, can reveal much about the universe. Here, celestial is used to describe objects related to outer space. So remember, anything celestial has to do with space. The next word is orbital. It refers to the path that a celestial body, again, a star, a planet, or a moon, takes around another object. For instance, Earth's orbital path around the Sun is elliptical. The orbital period of a planet refers to the time it takes to complete one full orbit around the Sun. Moving on to comets. A comet is a small celestial body made of ice and dust that orbits the Sun. When it comes close to the Sun, it forms a glowing tail. So, a celestial body made of ice with a glowing tail is a comet. Let's look at a simple sentence. Comets, such as Halley's Comet, have highly elliptical orbits that bring them close to the Sun at regular intervals. Now, let's talk about black holes. A black hole is a region in space where gravity is so intense that nothing, not even light, can escape. You've probably seen this term used in many movies about space, such as Interstellar. Let me know in the comments below if you've seen this movie. If not, make sure you do. It's a great film that will teach you many terms related to space and astronomy. An example using this word is the discovery of a supermassive black hole at the center of galaxies has provided insights into the formation of galaxies. The next word is galaxy. A galaxy is a massive system of stars, star clusters, planets, and dust bound together by gravity. Our galaxy is called the Milky Way. The Milky Way contains hundreds of billions of stars and is just one of many galaxies in the universe. By the way, you just heard me say another interesting word. 
Star clusters. What is a star cluster? This is our next term. A cluster is a group of similar things or people that are very close together. So a star cluster is a group of stars that are gravitationally bound together. A typical star cluster would look like this. Supernova. A supernova is a massive explosion that occurs when a star exhausts its fuel and collapses. For those who don't know, to collapse means to fall down or subside. When a star runs out of fuel, it can no longer support itself against the gravitational pull. This causes the core to contract or collapse, leading to the supernova explosion as the outer layers are violently ejected into space. For example, the light from a supernova can temporarily outshine an entire galaxy, providing critical data for astronomers. Now, let's look at the word asteroid. An asteroid is a small, rocky body that orbits the Sun. Asteroids can vary in size from a few meters to hundreds of kilometers in diameter. On the TOEFL listening, you might be asked, what role do asteroids play in our understanding of the early solar system? Remember in one of our previous videos, I mentioned how one of my students improved his reading scores by learning technical vocabulary. This is the kind of vocabulary you should learn. Choose the most common topics that appear on the TOEFL test. Then, review their basic terms. You don't need to memorize tons of words. 15 to 20 key terms are usually enough. To get a better understanding of these words, read a few articles or watch videos in Crash Course or other educational channels. It's more effective than just learning translations in your native language. This approach will definitely help you on your TOEFL test. For biology, I highly recommend checking out the Amoeba Sisters channel. Another important point is understanding the types of questions for each section and knowing how to approach them effectively. Often, students can understand most of the text in the reading section, but still end up with a score of 22 to 23. Some may know almost every word in the listening section, but get fluctuating scores ranging from 21 to 28. To score consistently high, you need to know exactly what to do in each question type and how to get to the right answers as quickly as possible. In our TOEFL prep course, we'll go over reading passages together, review strategies for the listening section, share high-scoring templates for writing and speaking, and more. You can find the link to the course below. If you want feedback on your writing and speaking, consider the pro package, but be sure to schedule the consultation at least a week before the test so you have time to apply the corrections I will suggest. Word number nine is nebula. A nebula is a large cloud of gas and dust in space where new stars often form. Let's look at sample sentences that use this word. The Crab Nebula, a remnant of a supernova explosion observed in 1054, is one of the most studied objects in the night sky. Two of our new words in one sentence, nebula and supernova. The bright colors of the nebula are caused by different gases emitting light at different wavelengths. A nebula and a supernova are the words that people often confuse. To avoid this, remember that a nebula is a place where stars are born, and a supernova is a powerful explosion that marks the end of a star's life. The next three words are also often confused by students. They are meteoroid, meteor, and meteorite. We've already discussed asteroids, which are rocky bodies that orbit the Sun. A meteoroid is a smaller fragment that breaks off from an asteroid and travels through space. So it's generally smaller than an asteroid. When a meteoroid enters Earth's atmosphere, it becomes a meteor. As it travels through the atmosphere, it produces a bright streak of light and is often called a shooting star or falling star. Finally, if a meteor survives its passage through the atmosphere and lands on Earth's surface, it's called a meteorite. So, a meteorite is essentially a piece of a meteoroid that has made it through the atmosphere and landed on the ground. Let's summarize the sequence. An asteroid can break up into smaller pieces called meteoroids, which then become meteors as they enter the atmosphere and if they reach Earth's surface, they are called meteorites. A few sample sentences. The bright meteor that appeared in the night sky was a spectacular sight for stargazers. 
Meteor showers are often named after the constellation from which they appear to radiate. In the last sentence, we have two more terms that are important for the TOEFL test. They are meteor showers and constellation. A meteor shower happens when many meteors enter Earth's atmosphere and create bright streaks of light in the sky. It looks like a shower of shooting stars. Many people around the world watch meteor showers, and there are popular events for stargazers and astronomy enthusiasts. Another word on our list is constellation. A constellation is something else that people like to look at in the night sky. It's a group of stars that form a recognizable pattern. There are a lot of constellations in the sky. Let me know your favorite constellation in the comments below. Some sample sentences. The ancient Greeks named many constellations after mythological figures and stories important to their culture. Navigators used constellations to find their way across the oceans before modern instruments were invented. Number 15 is light year. A light year is the distance that light travels in one year. For example, the Andromeda galaxy is about 2.5 million light years from Earth. After a TOEFL lecture on astronomy, you might be asked, how is the concept of a light year used to measure distances in space? The next two terms are my favorites. They are red giant and white dwarf. A red giant is a huge star that has expanded and cooled down after using up the hydrogen fuel in its core. The core is the center of a star. It appears red and is much larger than it was in the earlier stages. Now, a white dwarf is a small, very dense star that is left after a star like the Sun has used up all its fuel and shed its outer layers. It's not very bright, and it cools gradually over time. So let's recap. A red giant is a large, luminous star in the late stages of its evolution. A white dwarf is a star that was once a big star, but now is a tiny, dense remnant. Lunar eclipse. A lunar eclipse happens when Earth comes between the Sun and the Moon, blocking the Sun's light from reaching the Moon. As a result, Earth casts a shadow on the Moon. During a total lunar eclipse, the Moon can turn a reddish color, which is sometimes called a blood moon. There is also a solar eclipse, which happens when the Moon moves between Earth and the Sun, blocking the Sun's light. It can make it look like the Sun is partially or completely covered. So, lunar refers to the Moon, while solar refers to the Sun. You'll often find these words on the reading and listening sections of the TOEFL. For example, lunar surface, lunar phases, lunar craters, solar system, solar flares, solar wind. Another word on our list is luminosity. Luminosity in astronomy refers to how bright a star or other celestial object is. It helps astronomers understand how much energy a star produces and can also give clues about its size and stage in its life cycle. For example, a star with high luminosity is much brighter and emits more energy than a star with low luminosity. 21. Stellar. This term refers to stars. For instance, stellar evolution refers to the life cycle of stars. A stellar wind is a flow of charged particles that are emitted from the outer layers of a star. There is also the adjective interstellar, which means between stars or occurring in the space between stars. It describes anything related to the regions of space that lie between individual stars in a galaxy. For example, interstellar dust and gas contribute to the formation of new stars and planetary systems. The spacecraft is designed to travel through interstellar space once it leaves our solar system. These are 22 astronomy terms to help you succeed on the TOEFL exam. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for more TOEFL tips and tricks. And remember, scoring 100 plus on the TOEFL isn't rocket science. It's the little things you do that make all the difference. As always, I wish you all a stellar TOEFL score. See you next time. Bye-bye.